Okay, so there may be occasions where you have a client here as a visitor and he wants to approach the immigration department and get an extension to his visitor visa. Perfectly possible. Asking the immigration department down on the, uh, the sixth floor of immigration tower uh, for a first extension, no problem at all. But I warn you, the immigration officers at the visitor visa section are complete bears. They're complete bears because they get hundreds of applicants every single day, with all of them with a story, all of them anxious, all of them desperate to get the, uh, the, uh, the extension that they're looking for. And so the attitude of the immigration office is very, very, um, it's stark compared to, in that section, it's stark compared to the attitude of officers that are, uh, that are doing their work in a more sort of leisurely fashion, particularly on the higher floors of the immigration department. But in any event, you can approach the department for an extension. They will assess uh, at the time that you make the application if you're still a bona fide visitor to Hong Kong. Normally, the immigration department expects to have uh, a letter in support as to the reasons for the, um, the extension and then normally they will ask you to give an undertaking that at the end of that particular uh, extension that they're going to give you that limit of stay that you will leave and that effectively close the, closes the door in my experience to further extensions. Um, and the reason why is because the immigration department, as I say, they're resource strapped. What they would prefer to do is to send people off to Macau or off to Shenzhen or ideally just leave properly and then come back on a future occasion and be assessed by their colleagues when they present themselves uh, at, the, at the airport or at the boundary. So it is difficult to finagle a further extension out of, the, uh, out of the offices. If you've got compelling reasons, they'll listen to your story and, and they'll probably come to the party. But if you're going to ask for a two-month extension, you can forget it. You know, they might give you another week because you've got some compelling reason and you have to have, you have to reduce evidence to them that you do have a compelling reason so that they can be persuaded accordingly. Um, and then, of course, as I say, you can go off to the, uh, the Shenzhen shuttle and they've just touched upon the 180 days, um, the short conditional landing and the, the fact that it is fraught with difficulty. And if you think about it, that's the way it should be. Just because we, we are geographically constrained in the way that we are and we've got the ready access to other jurisdictions just by taking a train ride or a boat ride away really doesn't make it um, uh, for me a, um, a, a sustainable way to, to, to manage your ongoing visitor visa status in Hong Kong. Um, we do get very generous uh, allowances, oh, sorry, foreign nationals do get very general, generous allowances and uh, if they are staying here for uh, lengthy periods of time and usually there's some other motivation or some other rationale that's keeping them here and it's more than likely there is another immigration status that's suitable for them but more than likely they'll be eligible to apply for anyway and so you know they really should be getting on with um, making the application to the immigration department for those correct visas rather than just uh, relying on the on the visitor visa so that they can uh, they can maintain their lengthy residence here.